is majoring in communications, and so he has been such a gift to us as we um, have learned to, to do so many new things. So he just figured out what, why we weren't properly streaming and has fixed it. So um, we will once again um, resume our service. It is a pleasure to see you all here today. Let us worship God. Welcome again to worship, to the beautiful sanctuary here at First Presbyterian Church. And for those of you who are online, welcome to this service as well. Today is a communion Sunday, and um, I will be distributing elements um, during the hymn right before communion. So I will bring those to you. Um, we, we experimented with little pre-packaged um, juice and um, a, a bread, it was more like a cracker, and everyone absolutely hated it. So um, you will have the choice. You, those, that is available because that is gluten-free if you need that gluten-free option, but there is also bread and juice in little cups. If you will take both, then your elements will be ready for you during the communion. Um, I did want to mention on this, I hope you don't all have picnics to run off to, because Pat is going to host anybody here in the sanctuary. Um, if you're at home, obviously you have your own elements and you can't join us for the fellowship time afterwards. We will have a little fellowship time out on the sidewalk and you are welcome to linger as long as you can on this Independence Day. So um, please stay if you can. Um, a quick note about next Sunday. Next Sunday is Heritage Sunday here in Easton. And um, like all things, all things were sort of limping through um, restarts. So apparently Heritage Sunday is happening. But as we reached out to try to plug into what is happening, it was clear that things weren't going to be exactly as we would like, back to normal. Um, so we normally, we typically have worshipped down um, in, by the river together with other downtown churches. That's not happening. Um, so I extended the invitation to our other church neighbors to join us, and First Church UCC said yes, so they will be coming and joining us for worship next Sunday. So um, please know that. Um, other announcements that we have um, on this July 4th include, well, I've already mentioned worship. Um, the office is closed on Monday. Uh, we're so Grateful to have Jonathan. He deserves the time some off. Um, our congregational meeting will resume on July 25th. If you are somebody that has been asked if you will join us as a deacon or an elder, please um, let our nominating team know um, as we wrap those up. Let's see what else. Today is Pasta Sunday. Um, we do have a basket at the back of the service here. And if you are somebody at home, we do collections for our pasta for project on Tuesdays. So July 6th from 10 to 11.30, you can come by our parking lot and drop off your pasta. Um, we are also participating with our neighbors in the ARC luncheon that helps us feed folks. It's something that they do regularly um, and is really helpful for um, folks in the downtown. And um, if you can donate some um, non-perishables, fruit cups, uh, sippy drinks, chips, uh, we are collecting those now. The mission team will provide the sandwiches. So if you can supplement that luncheon, we will help to feed 40 plus people lunch. Um, so please participate. If you're somebody who has children in your lives, um, St. John's is having a vacation Bible school and you are welcome to, they have extended it to all the local churches and children are welcome to join them August 2nd through the 6th. And I believe those are our announcements this morning. 
Is there anything that I have missed? If not, friends, on this uh, July 4th, we begin our time of worship with just a moment of celebration and musical reflection. Um, if you will just take a moment to lift up your own prayers of thanksgiving um, for our nation's uh, birthday, as we like to say, um, and then we will begin worship. Will you join your voices with mine as we are called to worship? The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. God alone is our sovereign, to whom all bow in allegiance. Come, let us worship the Lord, our God, the ruler of nations. Please rise as we sing.
needed. We now come before God in prayer, trusting that God is gracious and merciful. We speak the truth of who we are. We are people who have fallen short of who God has called us to be. And so in faith, let us pray together. Gracious God, our sins are too heavy to carry, too real to hide, and too deep to undo. Forgive what our lips tremble to name, what our hearts can no longer bear, and what has become for us a consuming fire of judgment. Set us free from a past that we cannot change. Open us to a future in which we can be changed and grant us grace to grow more and more in your likeness and image. Through Jesus Christ, the Sovereign Lord. Amen. O oh, brothers and sisters, siblings in Christ, hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us, and Christ rose for us, and Christ reigns in power for us, and Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone, a new life has begun. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Alleluia, alleluia, amen. This morning's scripture is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 58, verses 1 through 12. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a, a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interests on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose, a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the throngs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, to cover them, and not to hide yourself from your own kin. Then shall your light break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry, 
and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall shine in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a water garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruin shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. The word of God for the people of God. If I was very brave, I would sing for you this little light of mine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Don't we all want to let our lights shine? I'm not that brave. I'm not going to sing for you. That's okay. You know the song. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. It's amazing these days. Um, we all walk around. Anybody with a cell phone, we walk around with our own personal um, video and studio Right? We can take pictures, we can uh, document every minute of every hour if we wanted to, and some people do. Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, Snapchat. If you don't have teenagers in your life, you might not know all of those. Um, all of those social media platforms rely on people taking and sharing images and videos all the time. Sometimes I think there are too many people out there who um, want to let their light shine in maybe a, a self-loving way a little too much, their own image and their own voice. The, back, the backdrop of having this age of selfies um, is that we can all easily fall prey to seeing the world in a distorted way. And here's what I mean. Today, the images and the presentations that people share online they're like the pictures that we send out at Christmas. You know those picture-perfect cards that we send of our families at Christmas time? They're like those. The images that we share are online are like the photo shoots in magazines, right? They're touched up, polished, and perfect. And they often lack the messiness and the real complications. They don't show those things that real life has, that makes life both hard and so beautiful. Recently, an author that I admire, she was interviewed, and she shared about the difficulties of her upbringing when she was a child. Her family was hurt by the disease of alcoholism. And her, uh, she had little sisters and a brother, and they struggled, struggled mightily while their parents' marriage was crumbling and eventually their parents divorced. And while inside of their house, inside of closed doors, they were hurting and struggling, they never let that be known outside, right? They put up a, 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 a good face. She thought all her friends and her classmates had perfect families and that only her family struggled. And then, as an adult, when she reconnected with her childhood friends, she recognized, no, it was not only her family that hid struggles. Other children, other families, right around their block, everywhere where she could look, she now learned that they had hurts and hardships of their own. She just didn't know about them. And she lamented that she had not known or shared about her own challenges because she thinks that maybe then she and her siblings would not have felt so isolated. But her family and her neighbors, they all put on a brave face to the outside world. Now, some people only share the pretty parts of their lives with others because they're being self-protective. We can understand that or because they want to be positive, they don't want to spread negativity. We can understand that. But every once in a while, we meet that person who presents themselves in a specific way for self-promotion. 
And this is particularly upsetting and off-putting when the person doing that posturing is also religious and makes it known that they are religious. Today's scripture from the prophet Isaiah reminds us that for generations, we human beings have struggled with this. You don't need to take one's picture to be able to promote yourself or to struggle with hypocrisy and pride. Long ago, our forebears in the faith were challenged by God to embrace humility, not hypocrisy, to embrace love of neighbor over selfish pride, to let our faith be an instrument of love and transformation to promote not ourselves, but to promote God's love. This is the warning that the prophet Isaiah brought to his people, a warning that those of us who claim to be godly people, that we should practice humble self-awareness as we put our faith in action. So Isaiah 58, that's what we heard of, heard from today's scripture, was written 700 years before the birth of Jesus. And during that time, the nation of God's people was, it was, they were going through a very uncertain time. The nation of Israel had been conquered. And the central institution of their identity, the temple, had been destroyed. Their leaders had been taken into captivity. And slowly some of that, those folks in exile were coming back. And there was a little bit of hope. And as the nation was struggling to find their new normal, does that sound familiar, finding a new normal? As that nation was trying to find their new normal, they had this inclination, and it was a good one. They wanted to put God back in the center of their lives and in the center of their society. It was a good inclination, but it was just a little bit off. God sends a prophet to speak to these people at that time to offer a little corrective message. Isaiah shares a message with his people, and it's very simple. Stop practicing religion in superficial and selfish ways. God tells Isaiah, shout out, don't hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. It's clear that the religious people have engaged in religious practices, which is good, to get God's attention and to gain God's favor. But they were using God. They were using those religious practices to get what they wanted. And this was not going to work. One scholar um, that I read described this as the people using God like a big vending machine. They were putting in their religious practices and expecting to get something that they wanted in return. Now, the specific religious behavior that Isaiah critiques is fasting. Now, fasting was a common spiritual practice among God's people. Fasting was an act of repentance of recommitment, of cleansing oneself, of stripping away distractions so that one could be closer to God and follow God's will. It was a kind of personal sacrifice, one that was meant to please God. But our scripture today describes how these particular people, this particular time, were fasting in a way that was anything but repentant. This is a very visual description of how these people repented. People were making a show of their fasting. They were walking around all bent over. Scripture says that they were walking like, like a bulrush bent by the wind. They were making a show of how bent down they were in their fasting. They were dramatically spreading out rough burlap cloth. This is made of burlap cloth, and I can tell you it's rather scratchy. They were putting out burlap cloth, and they were pouring ashes on it, and they were bowing down and fasting, and all the while, guess what they were doing? They were looking around to see who was watching. 
And they were expecting God to look at them and be impressed by what they were doing, by their display. God said, I noticed something, but that's not what I noticed. According to the reading, God spoke through Isaiah saying, look, you serve your own interests on that fast day and oppress all your workers on that fast day. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. This is not what God wants. Now, even today and in every generation, we know people of faith. We know Christians who have been hypocrites. We have met those super Christians who speak a lot about God and individuals who want to pray at family gatherings and who want to put keep Christ in Christmas on their flag out in their lawn and say, Jesus is my coal pilot on their bumper sticker, which is all fine. But they do those things, and yet in practice, they do not embrace God's grace. And that's the problem. They go to church on Sunday, and then on Monday, they slash their employees' health benefits to squeeze some more profit out of the business and out of their employees. They're critical before they are compassionate. They are self-righteous before they are humble. They use scripture, the word of God, the grace of God as a weapon to prove their positions right and to judge others. Their words say one thing about God's faith and love, and yet their behavior says something else. They want to show the world that they are good. They want to use their religious credentials over others. No, no, God says. Stop posturing. Stop with the hypocrisy. This is not the religious practice that God wants from us. And thank goodness, friends, thank goodness, God spells out very clearly in this passage what authentic, genuine spirituality and religious faith in action looks like. And we know what, it, what God wants from us. Isaiah's voice speaks, Is not this the fast that I choose? To loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the throngs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, to break every yoke. And God's message goes on to explain what that yoke is, that heavy burden that keeps people down, that keeps them unfree. What I'm interested in, says the Lord our God, is seeing you do this, sharing food with the hungry, offering the homeless a place to stay, putting clothes on the shivering, being available to your families. This is the faith in action that I want. God says, if you want your light to shine, if you want attention, take up this kind of religious practice that roots out injustice, that upholds the marginalized, then my light, God says, will shine in your lives and turn your lives around. I hope you're singing to yourselves, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Jesus preached the same message. He said it very succinctly when he told a parable about the end of time when he, as the Son of Man, would take over as the sovereign. He shared this story, saying this, Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. This is what Jesus calls us to. This is what, who we are meant to be, to let our light shine. And we know this. For we who follow Jesus proclaim that we and all humankind are made in the image of God. If you and I and every person in this world are reflections of the goodness, the beauty, the wisdom, the strength, the creativity, the righteousness of God, then of course 
we should let our light shine. We don't need to seek attention. We don't need to feed our egos if we know that we are loved by the creator who made us and if we live out the image of God in all that we do. And yet, our faith in human history teaches us that we often distort that image in ourselves and as we look at others. On this Independence Day, we mark a time in our history as a nation when we sought to make the world better, to stand for justice, to stand against oppression. It is a day worth celebrating. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We're all meant to allow our lights to shine brightly. This is an amazing statement, but it is an aspirational declaration. We know this. We know that Elizabeth Cady Stanton would use this document and that quote when she argued that women too should be seen as having equal rights, that they should have the right to vote, that their lights should be able to shine. Abraham Lincoln would use this document and those words to include, to argue that we should include human beings who were captured in Africa and who were made to be the physical labor that built this country, that they too should have their lights and their rights that were endowed by their creator, recognized. Martin Luther King would turn to the Declaration of Independence to call America to humbly look at the injustices which continue to be perpetuated, the inequality that continued to happen in our nation. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal is a beautiful, inspiring, and aspirational statement. In order for us to be our best selves as Americans and as Christians, we need to be willing to humbly admit those places where we are selfish and hypocritical. When we do that, then our light can shine because then we can embrace who God wants us to be. God tells us what to do so that our own light can shine as brightly as God's light. Loose the bonds of injustice. Let the oppressed go free. Share bread with the hungry. Bring the homeless poor into your house. And when you see the naked, cover them. And do not hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn. And your healing shall spring up quickly. And your vindicator shall go before you. And the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. And you shall call and the Lord will answer. And the Lord will say, here I am. Isn't that what we all want? Maybe we go about it imperfectly at times, but what we want to know is that God is here and that God sees us and that our lights can shine brightly. So friends, today know that God is here. God is here and God sees you, each and every one of us in our imperfect and beautiful, messy, real selves. And God loves you. And God calls you. God sees you and God calls you. God has a purpose for you, for each of us. And that purpose is to share the love that God has for us, that light with the rest of the world to raise our voice against the wrongs of this world so that no one needs to wonder if God cares. We are to be the instrument of God's light and God's grace. We are to share it and shine in it. And what a beautiful, bright world this would be if we could embrace that light in us and share that with the world. May it be so. 
In Christ's name I pray. Amen.
friends, I invite you to Christ's table. For the people will come from the north and the south, from the east and the west, to sit at table in the kingdom of God. Friends, this is not my table. This is not a Presbyterian table. This is the table of the Lord's great feast. There is a place for you here. Come. Will you join your voices with mine in the great prayer of thanksgiving? The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O God. We praise you for all your works. You created the world and you called it good. You made us in your image to live together in love. You made a covenant with us. And even when we turned from you, you were faithful. And therefore, therefore we praise you joining our voices with the choir of angels, with prophets and apostles and saints, and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name, singing, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. And we give you thanks for sending us your Son, who lived among us and told your story. He healed the sick and welcomed sinners. He shared our pain and died our death, and then rose to new life that we might live and all re creation be restored. We give you thanks that on the night that the Lord Jesus gathered with his friends before he died, he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. Whenever you share this, remember me. And in the same way, he took cup. And he said, this cup is a new covenant sealed in my blood, given to you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you share this, remember me. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Holy One, remembering your boundless love revealed to us in Jesus Christ, we break bread and we share cup, giving ourselves to you to live for him in joy and praise. Great is the mystery of faith. Jesus has died. Christ has died. Dying, you destroyed our death. Christ is risen Rising, you restored us to our life. Christ will come again. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of bread and wine. Amen. Will you join your hearts with mine in prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Alleluia. Amen. Let us share the bread of Christ.
the abundance of God's love overflows the cup of Christ given for you. Amen. Let us pray. God of glory, we give you thanks for this feast of your goodness and grace. Send us out to share the bread of life with all who hunger for your love. Through Jesus Christ, our living Lord. Amen. in the service we respond to God's grace with a moment to remember giving we thank you those who have given online and for those who are here who give there is a plate in the back of the sanctuary for you to give your donation to this church God is good and gracious to us and so we respond in ways of faith by giving to the church and pledging our lives to do God's grace. In Christ's name I pray, amen. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. 
help the suffering, honor all people, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord be kind and gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.